Climate change is probably one of the biggest, most important and most pervasive uh, problem that the human race currently faces. I think that space engineers can contribute. Here at the uh, Centre for Self-Replication Research, is, uh, we're, we're focused on trying to develop a new approach to solving global problems, large-scale problems. Self-replication, the, the concept behind it is that we can build a single machine which can then replicate itself to build exponentially its productive capacity. One of the current problems we have uh, is the amount of carbon in the in the Earth's atmosphere. Potentially through self-replication technology, we could perhaps build a machine and get it to replicate itself and suck out carbon out of the Earth's atmosphere. Potentially it gives us this opportunity, this ability to indulge in petascale global projects uh, that currently we can only dream of. It's also important that we project the philosophy of sustainability as we progress out into space. We don't want to bring all our bad habits with us. As a species, we've already outgrown the capacity of our Earth to support us. And we need to go out into space to bring in energy to Earth, to give nature a bit of a helping hand. Our energy needs will continue to grow. No matter how many techniques of efficiency or anything that we introduce, there are always going to be new applications for us to, to indulge in, uh, for us to consume energy. And our capacity for consuming energy is almost infinite. Working on self-replication machines involves a whole suite of engineering technologies, uh, ranging from manufacturing to mining to chemical processing to manufacturing, 3D printing. So I have students working on manufacturing, chemical processing, for example. I also have students working in AI, uh, robotics. I think one of the major advantages of working at the centre here is that we are constantly looking at our research almost on a holistic level. I have my part of research, which is extracting the alumina and silica from the lunar soil, but this is also part of a greater research endeavor that the center is undertaking, which is self-replicating machines. So in that optics, we're constantly thinking, how will this be affected by the previous step and how will it affect the next step? My work at the Center for Self-Replication Research is geared towards uh, the detection of resources that could then be used and processed into a machine. I've created a standoff Raman spectrometer and a contact-based Raman spectrometer. It's an instrument that uses Rayleigh scattering to identify and quantify a solid compound. I love the idea of being able to develop technology, however niche, that will benefit us in the sense of leading us towards greater scientific knowledge. Performing chemical reactions in space is difficult because you have to consider the physical state of those reagents and also the reactivity of those reagents. You have to take in account how or what reagents are you using and then you also have to consider what products are you getting. We are going through the process of electrochemically transforming minerals into metals and we transform those metals into functional parts for the self-replicating machine. On the face value, it's not a novel process. It's been done now for well over a century. What is novel and challenging in this process is that we're trying to contextualize it to outer space. Space manipulators that are currently being deployed in space, um, they are not adaptive and compliant enough for debris remover and uh, reuse of such debris and uh, how to make them to reproduce new materials from the salvage. The problem we are trying to solve at the center is how to possibly emulate human cerebellum such that we can replicate that in the approach of making robotic manipulators more compliant, adaptive to different tasks. The opportunity to work in space robotics in conjunction with artificial intelligence, I believe it's a rare privilege. Being able to accomplish that, to me, it's very uh, um, remarkable. The technologies that we're developing to go to the moon are things that are, we're going to be able to bring back here on Earth and help the world as a whole so that we can build global energy networks 
through space so that we can develop better industrial processes that are more sustainable not only in space but here on Earth. It's just a whole suite of things that uh, are involved in this and much of it nobody's ever tried to do before so it's very new and it's very exciting and there are a lot of question marks and well that's our job you know as engineers to do things that nobody's ever tried to do before. Thank you.